Okay, so what the f*** is polymesh 3D? Um, it's not a term that everybody knows. If you're not from the ZBrush world, it's a difficult one. So let's unpick it a little bit. And I'll make a little bit of an apology for last week because I forgot how hard this stuff is if you're coming new to ZBrush. So I'll fix my errors from last week and show you what you can do with parametric objects in ZBrush before you sculpt on them. So first of all, let me just explain what a parametric object is. So it's basically, in most programs, you get the ability to model on something with the polygons and be able to change its parameters before you affect it at the um, component level. So that means you can affect the things like number of spans of, of, of edges or, or, or um, edge loops. You can increase the amount of polygons overall and, the, and, the, and you can dynamically change certain things. You can find it in almost all programs, Cinema 4D, Blender, you know, um, Maya, uh, and, and even Nomad has exactly this. And in Nomad, if you're coming from a Nomad background, it's what you get with a primitive before you hit validate. OK, so you can see it here, Cinema 4D, you can call up a cube and you can change all of its parameters. And then with just C on the keyboard, it makes it into an editable object. Um, so you can see lots of programs do exactly that. Now, ZBrush does it and ZBrush does it with something called Make Polymesh 3D, which makes it nice and complex. It's been around since the 90s. So what it means is if you come here and you come from my sculpts down to new sculpt, you see 3D meshes, primitives, and Z-spheres. Well, forget Z-spheres for now and, for, and basically forget 3D meshes. 3D meshes are things you can sculpt on right now. If you go to primitives, these are all parametric objects. They don't call it that, but basically all of these can be configured if, if you open them as they are now. So let's just work through one or two of these and I'll show you exactly what I mean and then we'll get a bit more complex. So let's just start with what we did last week with a cube. So this is what we were using as a table last week and then we put a tablecloth on it. But that now has got a set of polygons that we can see and it's dark grey. The material is grey, so we're just using a, a matte cap grey. Now if I turn this on here, this is polyframe, um, this is wireframe in other programs. It's basically showing you the wireframe on and off. You can see me clicking it under LF here. If this isn't a color, so if it's just the basic material, that means it hasn't yet been made polymesh 3D. That is a tip, you'll see that. Once it's been made polymesh 3D and you can edit it and, and sculpt on it, then it goes into one of the uh, the, 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 the different colors that, that, that's used in polygrouping, which we'll learn in, in a later video. But basically, if it just looks the same as it does, but with a wireframe, then it hasn't been changed. That's one little tip. So if you come up to the tool, so you've, you've basically started on the menu and you've come to tool, and you have a look at the um, second button down. So th this is basically uh, on this panel here. You can see make poly mesh 3D. If you hit that now, that's a fully sculptable ed editable program uh, uh, tool, Z tool or model in, in other programs. But we don't want to do that. What we want to do is we want to change some of the parameters first. In all other instances, if you just want to take a primitive and sculpt, you hit that button now and that is fully editable and you can sculpt on it. So what we want to do is come back out of that and we want to come down here. So basically use this button here, open it, open the sidebar up and come down from subtil, past geometry, deformation, masking, visibility and, and display properties and go to initialize. Now, initialize is context sensitive. So you'll see one set of parameters or, 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 or basically sliders based on what the actual um, primitive is. So a cube will have a different set of sliders here than a sphere and also different from um, a torus and all the other shapes that are there. So you will see this change. It will be under initialize, but, but it will change. Now, to make matters even worse, when you have made Polymesh 3D, so you can now sculpt on it, the initialized panel will be completely different. So they don't make it easy for you, I know. I know, and it's never been easy to teach this stuff, let alone to use it. So 
If you unpick it and you learn this in your first few days of using ZBrush, then things get much easier. But but they still haven't made it user friendly, in in my opinion, as as I'm starting to reteach this stuff on the iPad. So, rant over. Um, what does the initialize mean? So if I just put this on the side here and then you watch the wireframe here. So we've got a number of things we can change while it's in this format. So we'll forget the aligning because uh, all we want to do is, 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 is uh, affect what the surface is. So you've got size. So you've got X, Y and Z size. So if it's sculptable and you've made Polymesh 3D, you'd probably just come down here to the gizmo and you'd be used to using it that way. So X, Y and Z, that's how we change the size. The side counts, as you can see, you can increase from four to five to six, etc., etc. So to make a cylinder from a cube, you just slide that up, and there's your cylinder. So that that that's as simple as that. Now just go back to four. We've got a twist like so. We'll bring the X size down to. Uh, let's clear it and make the X just th um, th no, not three. We'll make the X. 35 and we'll make the y35 and there you go so what you've done is you've basically made it narrower like a column but now it's twisted as well so that twist has given you you know so some nice dynamism in that piece so you might be needing this for a, a weapon a sculptural piece you can change the h divide which is the, 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 the you know one dimensions divides and you can change the v divide so with very little effort you can get really cool sculptural pieces that are fully um changeable at this level and that is a parametric object so this is this is a primitive in zbrush but it's acting in a parametric way so what if we choose something a bit more complex then? So what if we try something like a uh, a ring 3D? So if we take the wing th ring 3D, remember where we're at, we're on initialize, uh, forget a line for now. So you've got the radius. So obviously that just changes the size of your donut. You've got the coverage, which basically takes it less than 360 in terms of coverage. And you've got scale, which will scale one end from large to small. You've then got um, a twist, which you won't really see much until you change the next one, which is the L divide. Um, if you bring that right down and then change the uh, S divide as well, like so. And you could end up making things like demon horns. Um, I always I always teach this because this is the fastest way to make a demon horn. Uh, let's go to our Helix 3D. So this would be how we'd make a spring. And this is where some of the complexity is, is actually still in here because you can do it with profiles. So in here you can change, for example, this profile and it will change it down the length of it. So you can get some really nice complicated shapes in here. You can change thickness and change that at one end or both ends or in the middle, which is cool. And then come down to, um, or, or go up, and make, make that coverage a lot lower. So something like that. And you can see there with that um, uh, profile that I've done, it, it's, it's making it um, very, very mechanical. So if you want a, you know, a specific piece for an architectural piece or a robot piece, this might be your way to do it. This, again, I do a lot of stuff with Nomad, as, as you may well know. If you're used to Nomad, this is all in the curve f features um, or tube features with, with profile. That pretty much is based on this. So don't be thinking that anyone's, you know, th th that Nomad had it first. This has been available to us in ZBrush for, you know, I wouldn't say decades, but it's a long time. And in other programs going back into the into the 90s. So, you know, you know, you, we've been able to do things like this in Lightwave in, in, in the 90s on Maya. So this is very, very um, useful. It, you know, it's, it, it, it basically gives you the ability to really mess around and change these primitives uh, to suit your need. So if you come to 3D meshes here and you use this cube here and you've got the uh, polyframe on here, so you've got the wireframe on, you can see it's red. That means it is already made polymesh 3D. This is an editable, sculptable model. So you can sculpt on it. 
you can use the move tool and move it around. Um, you can do anything that you would normally expect to do on a, on a you know, the, the more normal way that we use ZBrush, the, the, the sculpting side of things. That's not what we want to talk about. What we want to talk about, if we go back, okay, so we go to primitives, cube, make sure polyframe is on, uh, on this side here, so you can see it. And as you can see, it is still the gray, so we know it's editable. We don't want that now, do we? We want to make it editable, so we'll go make poly mesh 3D. And with the wireframe on, you'll now see the polyframe color. We're going to change the name. I'm going to rename this one to um, uh, table. I'll call it table two because I think I might have done one earlier. Go back to this little icon at the top and find yourself a plain 3D. Now, the other one's disappeared because this is the only object open, but that's fine for this, for this moment. We're going to make Polymesh 3D, so that's now editable. And we can do rename, and we'll call this one Cloth 3, so we know for sure which one is which. Now, we want to bring the table to it, so they're both in the same subtool. So we come up here and do um, Insert or Append. And we called it table two, didn't we? So back onto the cloth and scale that up. So like so. And then we'll come to the side. We'll rotate it like that. And what I will do is what I did last week is I'll give it a little bit of a helper. So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to uh, scale it up to a, a, a decent sort of size. So. I just changed the brush size there with dynamic, so it's over the, you can see that it's over the table. And now we wanna to go to dynamics, back to where, where we were, so back up here. Um, I find these panels a little bit confusing, and, and I'm sure you will if you've never done this before. Um, so dynamics there. So I won't use liquify for a moment, we've got gravity strength, um, collision volume is on, uh, like so, and then um, I think the only other thing that I, I would want to set on, or oh, oh, floor collision is on, so that's good. Um, and let's just try that. So now if you just hit simulation, as you can see, the cloth works like that. So if you were having trouble last week and your cloth wasn't, um, it was just passing through the, the, the table, then, then that's why. It's all to do with Polymesh 3D. Um, and I apologise if you didn't quite pick that up from the last video. That's that's all on me. So, yeah, have a go at that. Um, have a go at the parametric objects. Play with some of those shapes. There are some cool ones in there. So, if you know, go, go in and, and, and dig deep inside um, and, and you'll find in here some of the fun ones are the, the Gear 3D, for example. Um, and uh, y y you can do some crazy stuff even with the, um, uh, the spheres. Our goal is obviously to help people create in new and innovative ways and hopefully we're covering that with new tools like the ZBrush for iPad and Valence 3D app which is we're going to start doing videos for that soon. So please feel free to subscribe, follow along and get involved.